<coughs> Thank you. Uh, welcome, everybody. Um, I'm uh, Michele Dalri, and I work uh, for Rotoblast since uh, six years. And at first, I would like to thank you uh, for coming here. So a lot of people. So we are glad that uh, we have this big number of people here. Uh, secondly, I just want to apologize if my English is not so perfect. So it's like a scholastic English improved with some travel, but nothing more. So I hope to be clear for everybody. And uh, third, uh, I would like to say that uh, we have now four hours to stay together. And uh, what we are going to see is also a part of a course that we have in uh, our company about uh, structural timber, above all for CLT and Grulam timber. And so in this case, we will see uh, like a general uh, overview of the uh, timber construction with some deepening about the CLT. And then for more uh, deep information, uh, uh, you're welcome to join us in our course that later we will speak about the hour and when we are going to make this course that we make in our company. Okay, so um, we will have this four hour together. I divided this presentation in four main parts in order to be focused on different themes because it's a long morning otherwise. And um, in the first part, uh, I would like to show you the general concept about timber construction. So um, probably some of you already know something, some other less. So I would just to make a, a summarize of what's on, going on in the timber, in timber world. And then in the next time, in the next um, yes, hours, we will go uh, deep in, in the connectors and CLT structure. Okay, at first, just a few words about our company. Um, I'm, I've seen that some of you already know our company, so it's not a new, but some other probably the first time that uh, is in contact with us. Um, our company is uh, um, located in the north of Italy. Uh, we are close to the boundary with uh, the Austria. So let's say that our company is a mother language, German and Italian company. So this is the reason why probably we have this culture of the so-called Alpine uh, technical uh, wood industry. Um, because when we was born 25 years ago, we were going to take uh, like inspiration from the German world and then we tried to develop all over the Europe and, and so on. Um, about the industry, let's say that uh, you can see our mission is to develop and offer solution to improve the building industry, uh, principally related to the timber construction. So our main focus is the timber construction and we try like to develop it because as you probably know in the world of structural engineers, um, I'm speaking about uh, the central part of Europe, it's not so common also for the engineers to study timber during university. I'm speaking about 20 years ago, maybe 10 years ago. In the last part of this uh, time, it's now more common to study the timber. But at first, we have seen that all, above all from Italy to Spain to France, where we have sat in the, in the, in the beginning there were not so much uh, culture about studying timber, Eurocode 5 and so on. And so this is also kind of our mission to develop this, this knowledge. Um, the vision so is to become the world leaders and uh, um, an important brand in the building industry, especially in the timber construction sector. Here you can see um, some of uh, the pavilion that our product was used in the expo that was have been in, uh, now it's in Milan. And so this is the child pavilion, but with other pavilion like Malaysia and France and so on, we have a lot of uh, good uh, showing of product. And what is good in the, the expo, in my opinion, is that half of pavilion are in timber. So this means that really uh, nowadays timber is well known in, in the world because half of the pavilion in timber is such a big uh, quantity. About the products, so we are a company that deals with the, pro the products. 
for making everything with timber. Not with the timber actually, but with the products. So especially everything regarding the fixing, so from the screws to the angle brackets um, and so on, to the waterproofing, so the taping, the ceiling, the soundproofing, so the acoustic part, which is very important, and we will have a look because timber is a fantastic material, but we have to be um, to, to to focus our attention on only on the defect of the timber, and the acoustic improvement are for sure one of the critical <coughs> points of timber, and also fall protection system. And fall protection systems is related both to the construction, so during the constructions and also uh, after the construction, so when people want to go on the roof after the realization of the roof. And finally, this is the sector where we have born and the tools and machines for the carpentry and wood joinery. As regards the target, of course, not only the carpentry and wood industry is our target, which has been the first of uh, where we have born, but also, of course, the technical offices, the engineers, and the industry. The industry of timber is our target. Okay, so after this small introduction, I would like to start. As I told you, we start with a general concept about the timber construction. Um, what I want to focus is this. So in the timber building, we can divide the structural technology of the timber into two parts, the timber panels and the solid frame. With the timber panels, I mean uh, all that enhances the structure to be bearded, which is like the panel. So the bearing of the structure is the panel. And the panel can be a solid panel, like the CLT structure, or a frame panels, like for you in, in this market, the British market, very classical, the timber frame. The second division, the second uh, classification is study the solid frame. So the bearing is the classical column and beam, so post and beam structure, which is of course totally different approach to the timber building because it's not just panel, but it's like in, like in the culture of uh, steel and let's say st steel cultural technology. And today we are, we are going to focus on the timber panels, solid panels and CLT in particular. So again, timber panels, the cross laminated timber and the frame panels. So in here we can imagine that it is a, a panel but the panel is compound from a frame and the wind bracing, so the USB panels that can give the stiffness of the frame. And then of course all the connection. In the solid frame instead, again, you probably cannot see from outside at the first sight if this is a panel frame or a solid frame. But generally, structurally, instead it's completely different. So here you have the column going straight from the ground to the roof and then the beam that they give the general frame and then, of course, very important, the wind bracing for giving the stiffness. So the vertical loads are taken from the columns and the horizontal loads are the stiff systems. And again, all the connection. In this case, instead, the stiffness is not uh, realized through a panel, but is realized through um, the cross, so the cross which could be like in steel again, so road steel or in timber. And here is the general way how we present the timber industry. So the solid wall which has compound also from block bow, so this kind of technology. This technology is quite famous, let's say, in the Alpine region and in the East Europe and North Europe. Um, I'm not sure about in this region if it's quite common, this one, anyway. And of course, it's solid wall because again, it's the bearing structure is the panel. 
and again the CLT panels. Soft frame, soft frame generally known as the um, platform frame or balloon frame. We will have a look after what's the difference between balloon and frame. Actually here I wanted to underline that platform frame it's kind of different according to the territory where you are because a platform frame quite common in UK and US market, USA market is this one so quite um, thin element instead the platform frame in Alpine region is something more similar like this one so with a bigger dimension of the timber and finally the solid frame is not only the wind bracing system that we have seen before but also what is generally known as portal so the structural behavior in which you have the column and the beam but in which you have to create here um, a rigid joint which in timber you know it's quite difficult and late after we will have a look how can we realize this kind of joint here Okay, so uh, you will find also in all our uh, brochure and catalogue that we have given to you uh, we always focus our attention on these three technology so the XLAM cross laminated timber, the blockhouse and the platform frame and so here we summarize what is the difference between them so uh, maybe for you, some of you could be a well known concept that I want just to make sure to make like a classification in order that we can speak about the same concept. Okay, um, a very small introduction about loads and structural beha behavior. As I told you here, I just give general concept. Um, I don't want to go deep in, in details. Uh, okay, vertical loads, generally what we have, the self-weight of course, the snow that you can see that in some part can be very big and the live load. Generally in the timber structure this kind of vertical loads is not so a problematic aspect. Let's say that uh, actually regarding to the vertical loads the size of the timber especially regarding the CLT structures we can say that it's uh, always enough. I mean that, okay, in the CLT we can choose if it's 100 uh, mils, 120 mils, 140 mils, if we have two or three floors, generally speaking, uh, but it's not the critical point of the building. What is instead the critical point of the building is the horizontal loads. The horizontal loads could be according to the part and the region where you are going to design the wind or the seismic force. Of course the seismic force are very important in the region where the earthquake happens. I'm uh, speaking about the South Europe, about USA, about all the part where CLT is famous. In here I know that um, there are some uh, uh, earthquake force quite big, let's say, generally normal here in UK only in the west part, in the central southwest part of England there is some problem with the seismic otherwise the problem could be the wind in this case. So as I told you in the design of timber building is the horizontal loss the critical aspect that we have to take to focus our attention. So earthquake and wind is like this force trying to move our building quite basically um, from a seismic point of view, um, okay, the, the theory in order to determine determinate the force is the most important aspect, but of course doesn't is, is not related to which kind of structure we have. So it can be uh, steel, can be concrete or, or wood and so on. Anyway, what we have for output are horizontal forces acting on our building and we have to focus on this aspect. This is the typical scheme that we show also in our catalog. Uh, we, we gave to you at the beginning this catalog that are um, for us like uh, we are proud of our catalog because uh, as I told you we try to make like uh, uh, innovation and uh, school 
of our products, but not only the product, but also about design in the catalog. So you have seen that it's, they are quite heavy, but at least you can see everything. We try to put there everything we, knew, we know about the timber structure. So this is the scheme taken from the catalog, and basically you can see the behavior of the building with horizontal force. Everything is related to the connections of these shear plates between the wall, the floor and the wall. And these horizontal forces basically can be uh, decompounded, let's say, in uh, horizontal forces acting alone, uh, along the, the plate, the, the, the panels, and some tension forces that try to rotate our panels. So the behavior is it's quite simple at, to, to get. And everything, everything is related to this concept and to the second very important concept that all our structure must show, must have like a box behavior. So we will see after what's the meaning, but if we have a box behavior of the structure, it means that the loads acting in this direction are taken from the wall in the same direction and opposite if the force are coming in the other direction. We will see after what's, what's the meaning. Okay, so again, horizontal forces coming here, box behavior of the structure. And so these forces are transferred from the floor to the wall and the single wall, the acting is, is forces like working like this in this way and the forces in this tension and everything is related to the connection panels to panels and to the ground. And so here it's like an overview of the type of connectors that you need in order to create this fixing. So here you can see basically that you have two different possibility of anchoring to the ground. Basically, usually, the standard way is that you have like, let's say a floor, so a flat floor here and the panel is standing right there. So of course you have 90 degrees connection, so angle brackets and so on. On the opposite, if you decide more often nowadays, it's becoming more common, I mean in last two years than it was five years ago, to create this kind of solution where this solution can come only if um, who's going to realize the timber structures is in a very good connection with who is going to realize the concrete. <laughs> because nowadays still it, it happens that who realizes the concrete has generally a kind of, um, let's say, tolerance in the mindset tolerance of centimeters. Instead, who's realizing timber is, is the mindset of a tolerance of millimeters. And this discrepancy a lot of time is the real problem of mm, designing timber. And so nowadays with a lot of uh, company working in timber, there is more connection with people that are realizing the concrete. And so now solutions like this are possible. Still not common, but probably in the future will be more common to use this one. Anyway, so these two configuration with different angle brackets. And again, all the other connections are related to the uh, screws and the fixing from wall to floor and to wall from roof. And we will see after. Okay, and again, this is the general behavior. Of course, regarding the angle bracket, you can see that generally speaking, where you have here the tension load, so in the edge of the panels, of course, you need some <coughs> tall angle brackets because the transfer of the loads is in this direction, so you have to take it and to, to make sure that it's standing there. At the opposite, for the shear forces, you need some uh, uh, small and wide angle brackets that can take the load which is uh, along the, the wall. So a different approach with the angle bracket. So basically this is the main differences. Angle brackets work in tension and angle brackets working in shear. 
Okay, let's see, let's see now something about the timber solid panels, so the CLT panels. I've seen that some of you is producer, so I think that are not useful information now that I'm giving, but anyway, some of you, it's also the first time that see the timber construction, so let, let's have a look to what the technology, technology of the cross-laminated timber. Uh, the geniality of this system, in my opinion, is that it's like the glue lamb timber, so the glued laminated timber that comes from uh, the, let's say, the solid timber is cut in order to have board, um, to have board like, um, yes, 30, 40 millimeters high and uh, something like 20 centimeter wide. And from this board, you can realize the glue lamp beam. The cross laminated timber is like the same technology, so you obtain the board from the solid wall, but then you glue it in a way that you obtain finally a panel and not only a beam. So it's like an evolution of the, the glue and laminated timber. And this is the good uh, behavior of the CLTs given from this property. So, as you can see here, you have these different boards that are glued on uh, the side and you obtain the first layer. And the second layer is oriented with 90 degrees compared to the first layer and so on. So you are basically from three to seven layers, so uneven layers with different orientation, 90 degrees. And so you are going to um, avoid all the defects of timber because of the board that you obtain from the solid wall. And this is the first benefit that you have from this kind of panel. And the second one is that you are going to avoid the problem related to the different orientation of the grain of the timber. So the timber is an anisotrope material. In this case, you are going to uh, avoid this behavior because you obtain the stability of the timber through the fact that you have different boards and different orientation. And this is what is very good for this kind of material. This material, uh, it's curious the fact that uh, the initial idea, idea was only to recover the discarded zone of log. So when you wanted to obtain a solid beam, timber, you had to remove this part of the timber. And then it starts the idea to use again this part in order to create some board and to obtain another type of material. And from that, it became just the way to obtain all the board from the solid wall to, in order to obtain the final CLT. So it was quite a, a genius idea and quite recent because it was born in 1996 and you can imagine that it took some time to be developed in the world and in 2010 there were already more than 1 million of square meter produced in the world so the increasing have been very fast. So this is the technology that it's used also for glued laminated timber to obtain the beam so the fact to obtain board that then you can connect each to the other with these finger joints that can be in this direction or in this direction. You are going to place this board one um, across the other and then you create the second layer above. So this is generally the board from 15 to 45 millimeters from 8 centimeter to 24 centimeter. And this technology of 1996 uh, is quite famous nowadays uh, because I think that can also um, take the general people that are not, uh, the private people I mean, that are not focused on the potentiality of timber to appreciate a material that can also be solid. So this is a kind of revolution in my opinion. I'm speaking about Italy. In Italy before 2000, 
no timber houses were existing. Only the block bows technology that I've showed before, but they were only in the mountains, like in the Alpine region, like a traditional way to show the timber building. And timber frame absolutely was not existing in Italy, the timber frame as we uh, think nowadays. But with CLT, a new culture came because the CLT is a solid. So the, the Italian are used to the stone, to the masonry, and to this kind of technology. And with this technology, you recreate that standard. And so this is why in some region like Italy, not used to timber, it could develop. And the same as in Spain and France, France is a bit different and, and so on. Okay, regarding production, let's say um, quite briefly that of course uh, nowadays we have a lot of producer, very big producer, so let's say the, the big players in the market that you of course I think you know, and then also always more small producer. Uh, for example, in the north part of Italy now there are four or five small producers so that are able to produce. Um, and of course the technology also is very interesting how it can be developed a different way to develop this production of timber. Anyway, the big um, classification of how to produce the CLT is by finger joint made vertical or horizontal. We have seen here different technique. Um, the composition, so it can be produced uh, by layers, so you have to make at first the layers and then to overlap the various layers or in one way, so in one step, you are able to produce and at the same to uh, overlap the layers in the same time. So you produce this one, then you produce the other way and so on. And the glue, the glue can be also use it on, um, on the side, so not only upper surface, so, or just upper, so on the upper surface, or on side and upper, so plus uh, glue. And it depends on technology, of course, then uh, we will see now there is also this culture of the BOX lamp that doesn't want to use the glue, but anyway, we'll see after. And then the press, so the press can be mechanical or by air and the technology differs about this. Um, I think in this kind of production there are some people of you that could also tell me something about how to produce it. Anyway, the cross-elemented timber, so it's not only glued but can be also nailed. This is some uh, technology that are used in were developed in, in some university, so not only with the glue but with the nails and the good thing is that probably you have a better behavior for ductility. The bad thing is that you must be sure that it has the right rigidity in this panel to, to work. And also quite famous is the, the real bio exam, which means that all the connections and all the joints are made without any glues and odd any nails, so just by, by wood joinery, a carpentry joint. Um, so, you can see that the technology can develop also in different way. Um, there are few producers also in North Italy of this kind of panels. So again, in the production you can see what's the best future of the cross laminated timber. So, you have different layers, one, two, three, four, five, in different directions and with no defects or with not no defects, but with an avoiding of the defects of the timber. And then everything is realized in the construction plant, and so you can cut with uh, machinery control that can realize all the type of cut in the timber. So you have like a perfect material going from uh, the plant to the construction site that can avoid any uh, and discrepancy. For this reason the timber constructor works with the millimeters <coughs> instead the concrete and the masonry works with the centimeter tolerance. Regarding the dimension, these are some dimension. Here there are different producers and you can see that all the producer can produce different weight, different length, different wide, different thickness 
And so what we have to take into account when we make the design of this uh, technology is that at first we can uh, design uh, in general way, but when we have to go deeper in details, uh, we should know which kind of producer is going to realize our panel. So we have like to have a partnership or something like that. It depends if you're working in a company or you are a private engineer, but some information about the real final producer, the CLT is important because the dimension can change quite often. Some producers have not so uh, large panels, some are very large panels also, the possibilities that you have are different. Um, so with all these uh, properties that I show with you in the production, you can, you can understand why it's a good material and why you have stability, resistance, stiffness and thermal insulation and big dimension. Stability, resistance and stiffness is because of the mass, the, the fact that you have a heavy material compared to the standard timber. And thermal insulation also because wood is a good thermal insulator material and you have uh, panels that in the wall are from 10 to 15 centimeters, which is already a good uh, behavior for, for a wall. So this is why now it's very common, this timber in Alpine region, because it has the good property of the Klima House uh, technology, so the cows that don't waste energy. And this is also the second way that we had this develop in, in the Europe. And again, the numerical control machine. Here you can see the typical production. Here is the moment in which we have the glue, but above all here is the moment in which you can create this kind of uh, milling and cutting and this kind of holes. So you can really uh, foresee everything regarding the, your panel that you are going to realize in the construction site. So regarding what I was telling you before, you can see here two examples of a wall. In this case, the wall has some dimension which are possible to realize in the width of the panel. So you just need to place in this direction the panel. But if you have instead a situation in which you, have, you need higher uh, panel, you have to rotate your panel. So you have to think in the design to rotate the panels and you will have panels in these directions and then you have to solve this joint here and this joint here. So for this reason it's important to know also which kind of technology or production you are working with. And this is, that is a typical floor and you can see here some advantages that are the fact that you can create the hole here and you can foresee everything in the, in the design. Okay, here are typical examples of what you can realize with CLT. Um, general, there are standard houses, so private houses or also hotel. Hotel are quite um, a good deal to realize hotel because you are really fast, so a lot of time you can um, you can go so fast that you can open before your season in the hotel. For this reason, we have recently a lot of projects in, uh, in uh, the tourism region and also commercial center, residential center. Uh, let's say that what uh, we have seen that in uh, UK market, um, the CLT is related much more to school, um, school, hotel, commercial, and not so much about houses. Uh, which is completely different from what's happening uh, in the other part of Europe where also the private uh, and common houses are realized with this technology. So let's have a look to the behavior of the CLT timber uh, when you have horizontal load and uh, vertical load. So basically, as we have seen before, the vertical load is taken from the panel, which is just an uh, easy verification of uh, the compression element, and instead the horizontal load is taken, let's say, from all the panels, yes, but must be transferred from compression and tension in the edge of the panels. So generally speaking, the behavior is this one. 
vertical, horizontal, it's like the sum of the compression uh, with the shear resistance here and the rotating action here. This is what happens on the concrete, which is basically the same of what happened in the timber, with the only difference that the compression is not concentrated in, in, in one point, let's say not in one point, but in a part, and it's just linear on the timber. But basically, the concept is the same. Tension and shear forces. So, generally speaking, here is the typical uh, angle bracket that you, you should use. All down in the edge, so where there are the opening and in the edge of the building, and uh, angle brackets for shear along the wall. So small and wide angle brackets because it's easy for these angle brackets to take all the forces. And the building of a CLT is like summarized here. So hold down again in the corners and in the openings. Screws in the corners, of course. And um, here it depends basically from the forces. Let's say that in our experience, the, the span can go from, uh, in, in medium it's like 40 centimeter. We are speaking about the screws of eight mil screws. And then actually can go from 30 centimeter to 50 centimeter, the span between these screws here. And screws in the panel joint. Of course, this panel must be connected with this panel through some joints. And we will see after which kind of solution we can provide. And finally, to end the first floor, the panels to cover everything to realize the floor. So you can understand why it's quite fast to realize the building. And again, of course, floors on panels connected by screws with this kind of joint here. This is one of the solutions that you can have, but it's not the only one. And again, then it can start the second floor and so on. So screws again here, angle brackets for all down here and shear in here. And again, the second floor for the second panel. And finally, you can go up and the roof. And the roof, of course, you can have the roof with the CLT panels or also a standard roof. It depends on which kind of technology do you use. Uh, generally speaking, a roof, it's nowadays not so common to realize the roof also with the panels, but it's taking also this technology is going to advance. Usually you, you realize that the, team, the roof with the standard technology that you have which is not a problem with the structure that you have below. Okay, some other details also, because, yes? Should I ask questions at the end of the Well, you can make so it. Why is the roof panel not so recommended in CLT? No, no, I recommend it for sure. Yeah, I just mean that it's um, in percentage. Nowadays for the standard houses, uh, it's not so, not 100% is realized like this. This is the, the meaning. So but why, why, why? Uh, probably because uh, people want to see the beams, you know, and uh, to see, I, I'm speaking about the Italian culture probably. Right. They want aesthetic reason, just aesthetic reason, yes. Not for structural reason, aesthetic. Probably here, because here it's not so common to see houses uh, realized with CLT. But for example, the commercial building, they are realized like this. So in here, it's just the standard way. Okay. Okay, and um, plus the details I've shown before, this is what technology also is going, uh, is going. I mean that you have seen the standard angle brackets, hold down and shear angle brackets. And here are some of new products that we developed in order to be um, like to solve situations that are going to be created in this kind of technology. And nowadays, always more uh, from architectural point of view, um, it's common to go to, um, to use timber in the aesthetic way. So in order to create very nice uh, 
uh, houses and so on. And what happens a lot of time, it's not a lot of time, but it's starting to happen quite often, is this kind of very narrow panels. So you can understand that in here, you have a, a forces acting here. You don't have so many spaces, so many distance and length to transfer these rotation forces. So always more, <coughs> it's requested very big hold down with high technology and uh, high resistance. And for this reason, we had to develop something also very big in order to take the forces acting in here. Or for example, as I was speaking before, this kind of solution is starting to be more common. So uh, it's important to give the same resistance to traction and to shear also when you have this kind of connection on the flat concrete. And so the, the concept is the same. So the uh, plate working on tension in the edge and plates working on shear along the wall. Or if you remember when I uh, showed you the BO XLAM, so the XLAM realized it only with, uh, um, uh, without any glue, this is like a proud of the producer that absolutely wants to show her, his own panel. And in order to show the panel, we cannot have the very high angle brackets and hold down that I told before. So we also had to develop something that can be like a hold down, but very, um, very short. And so we have to develop this special shear angle brackets with this washer that can work like an old down but in a, a small in a small high and so these are new products that we are trying to develop all the time or again and the acoustic behavior we told you that i told you that it's one of the critical aspect of the timber um, so you know that it's basically you for sure you need this kind of stripe in here just to disconnect the wall from the floor but the technology is going to advance and we also want to disconnect the angle brackets from uh, the wall to the floor. So of course we had to develop like a rubber that can be placed here and in which you can nail through and then you have this disconnection from the floor to the wall. So technology is also advancing in the timber, timber industry. And again for CLT, uh, you can imagine that we have here our uh, panels of CLT and which is from 10 to 15 centimeter. In this case, it is, uh, uh, I don't find anyway, something like 10 centimeter. If we put again the fiber, the, the wood fiber, you can imagine that you have a perfect insulation wall with very high uh, performance. So this is why uh, cross aminated timber is well appreciated all over the, the Europe. Okay, again regarding the dimension, um, according to the producer you can find different brochures in which you can see which are the general uh, uh, thickness of the panel. So when you are the designer at first it's always interesting to, to have a look to the producer and which kind of uh, uh, thickness they have. Um, and all the dimension can be, the pre-dimension I mean, can be easily made with this data, with this brochure, because you receive um, how much must be the width of the panel according to the load that you have acting. So the first approach is quite, uh, uh, it's quite general in this way. And here you can go to the website of any producer and to see uh, different, uh, different uh, uh, values that you can do. Of course it changes the length um, between if you have just one span or plus span it changes the, the thickness of the floor. Uh, so generally speaking let's say that the panels goes from uh, uh, 10 centimeter to 15 centimeter and instead the floor, of course, that is subject to the, um, the flexion force generally is much more. It's 20 centimeter or approximately from uh, 16 to 24, generally 20 centimeter. That means that the CLT on the floor must be from five layers to seven layers 
and instead for the wall it's from three layers to five layers. And then the real and actual dimension de depends from the producer that you are working with. So these are everything that is, I think, the good opportunity for the cross terminated timber. So high dimensional stability and high mechanical and thermal performances. And very good to realize multi-stories and uh, both small and multi-story buildings with high resistive uh, and stiffness panels and also the fact that I was telling you that also the private uh, people use it to masonry and stone can finally move to the timber industry, timber technology. Okay, uh, I go forward. So we now have had a look to the CLT uh, technology and I would like now to give some information about uh, soft frame so timber frame and um, not so I, I will give less time to this technology because I think it's well notedly here and it's not the main focus of this presentation anyway uh, we were speaking about timber frame and timber frame can be divided into two technology the first one, the first one that was born, let's say, is the balloon frame that was born around uh, 8, 1830 in USA. Uh, it's, it was born in order to uh, cre create the possibility to, to build houses very fast uh, during the moving of uh, American people, let's say, from the east to the west. And the technology is quite easy and um, what is the main future of this technology is that you have this post going from the ground to the second floor. So it's just one element going through and instead the other elements of the floor are just in the middle of this technology. And generally speaking the, um, the dimensions are quite small, 5 cm times 10 cm and the span is about 45 cm. So these are generally the main balloon frame uh, structure. And instead the platform frame is like an evolution of the balloon frame. Um, the difference is that you don't have here the post going up to the floor, but the construction is made floor by floor. So at first you have the first floor with all your frames and then you realize the second floor and again the third and so on. In this way it was possible to go upper in the dimension of the timber because with balloon frame you could just reach two floor and nothing more because of course the dimension of the post was the most critical and this was the first uh, direction of the development of higher houses. The platform frame had an evolution after I think after the evolution of the timber, uh, which is, let's say, the platform frame alpine, I call it. So bigger dimension of the post, which is about from 12 to 16 centimeter with a span of 67 centimeter related in module of uh, related to the OSB panels, which usually are 125 centimeter. And for this reason, uh, the span is half of one panel of OSB and this technology uh, the same had some uh, develop, developing uh, related to the, uh, the height of the building and the fact that for thermal insulation it was important to give more massive even if it's quite different from the CLT because you don't have so much massive uh, behavior in the building. And these are typical joint of timber frame technology. So it can be this kind of uh, uh, joinery in order to realize the post going into uh, the beam. And you can see that dimensions are quite bigger than in the balloon frame technology. And this is the typical example of a platform frame alp alpine region. With this kind of joint, so you can see that the general uh, detailing is similar between CLT and timber frame um, and this technology, but what changes is some more uh, attention on the detailing because 
the, the, I mean, not the detailing, but in the point in which the floor goes into the wall. Because with CLT panels, of course, you have solid wall everywhere, so it doesn't matter exactly if uh, you don't have um, potential line of load going from uh, the floor to the panels. In this case, instead, you have the beam here that must go through the post pages. So uh, during construction, you must be more focused on the detailing. And the behavior, the same as we have seen on the CLT, is this one. So the vertical load is not taken from all the wall and the solid wall, but is taken from the frame. So the post in here, so you just have this distributed load acting on three columns. And, and the same, the horizontal forces is at first transferred from the OSB to the frame. So it's very important to make this kind of connections that you don't have in the CLT. So you, you, you must be really sure that all the connection here with nails usually or screws is able to take the horizontal loads and to transfer in here. And after you have realized this one, you can make this kind of connection which is the same of CLT. So the rotation is compression and tension in the edge. There is it's a little bit more complicated the verification of the vertical load in the timber frame. And what's the reason? Um, the reason is that you have frame, so you have column, and you have to make two more verification. So the first one is the instability of the wall. As I told you, the fact that all the nailing must be connected here. And the fact that this frame has not an instability due to the point load on it. And the second one, which is maybe the most critical, is that in this case, you have a load coming vertically in here. But in this point here, you have your beam working in this direction. So the grain is working along in this direction. And so you know that in timber, uh, this is a critical point. So timber has not the same resistance in parallel to the grain or orthogonal to the grain. So the risk is that this kind of beam can crash a little bit because of the forces. So you must have a verification here that the force is enough. And if this doesn't happen, you can work on placing a second, a second post across to hit, or you have to change your technology panel here and you have to go straight from this point to the ground without any beam here. In this way, the contact is parallel to the grain and you don't have this problem. So a little bit more challenging, the compression. But after that, uh, the horizontal forces is the same principle. And again, this is the basic the scheme. So traction and shear. And here, the angle brackets are basically the same, which is, again, all down in the edges and shear plates along the wall. Here you can see some detailing in which you have like a tie beam, like in large material, which is high, higher resistive for the humidity and the water, and then your final uh, frame starting from here. Here you have a typical uh, timber frame construction. Here I want to focus attention on this solution, which is, uh, could be interesting. So the floor is realized not through timber frame uh, uh, floor, but through uh, this glue lamp beam placed on their side, which is a good way to install fast and to give mass to the, to the construction. Just to be careful in this case that 
again in these directions you have to place some uh, like gap between the beams because because for the humidity the timber can move a lot and so you must be careful to have some gap to take this movement of the timber and then as we have seen with the CLT you go up with your solution and in the roof also here I took just this side this slide just for showing you some technology that it's common <coughs> in North Italy is this solution with a roof in large material for this reason you see it in another color created like it's like a double roof so the rear roof is just this one and you have a second uh, layer of roof that starts from here and go outside the building and this is very uh, nice regarding the thermal insulation of the building because you don't have any contact of this beam with the outside and uh, so this is well appreciated in, in the territory where it's quite cold in the winter and it comes from the traditional culture of carpentry and we we have we, we show also in, in the courses in order to to show how can you also realize a roof okay and um, the difference with the CLT regarding the stratigraphy is that of course here you have the insulation but in this point here where you have the frame where, where you have the wood you have for sure a, a small thermal bridge that you have to to fix and you can fix with another layer of uh, insulation uh, but anyway could be like a critical point of the building that you have to solve somehow and you can see here how it solved it in the uh, Klima house culture so uh, in the passive houses that you don't you want to not to waste uh, energy and so on you can see that here you have your frame but here you have a big uh, layers of insulation from outside and also some uh, wool inside so it's like a very massive wool uh, with good uh, performance regarding the thermal behavior okay so the third that we have seen is the solid frame building so columns and beams building as we have seen the approach is totally different be be because we don't have any more panels but we just have posts and beams and again what is very important is and very critical is not only the vertical loads but is the horizontal loads and how we try to solve the problem of the stiffness so actually the timber technology this was the really first way to build in timber because we have seen that the timber frame technology was born in uh, in the 19th century and the CLT was born 20 years ago this instead you can imagine that was really the first because it's the most, most intuitive way to, to realize building also in this case you can imagine that in here you have to be more fo very focused on the thermal bridge and so you have to realize some uh, uh, insulation outside that can solve the problem in this kind of technology we have to focus from the design on the wind bracing because everything is related to wind bracing uh, wind bracing is very important and has two uh, has two target two purpose the first one is the classical wind bracing which is to take the wind the horizontal force forces like wind seismic force and lateral impacts but the second the second target is the stability so to resist to the fictitious, fictitious actions that simulate second grade effects so the instability of the element that you have inside and this is also very important so in this case you can see that most standard way to solve this problem is with this cross systems 
with uh, trusses, which can be steel trusses or timber trusses. In steel trusses, what is good, of course, uh, is the fact that, uh, well, actually, are the same. In both cases, you have always to, um, to take the, um, the design model in which if the force is acting in this way, just this element and this element, of course, is working because the force is lateral. And, and this one instead is going to not, not to work because it's subjected to instability. And the same is for the trusses. Let's say that in this case, it's easier to make the connections of the steel trusses to the beam. In this case, it's not so easy. I mean, you have to focus on the design because you have to be sure that the forces from here is transferred in the timber. But in this case, you could have problem with fire because of course you have steel that is working uh, in straight contact with fire. Instead, in this one, you have more possibility to focus on the sides. This kind of solution also is solid frame beams and columns. And what's very important in the, in the design in timber? In the timber, it's not so easy to create this joint uh, because in order to work, this portal must have hinges, hinges and hinges. <coughs> and here it must have like a rigid joint. But you probably know that in timber it's really, really difficult to obtain a rigid joint. Let's say almost impossible. You can just uh, reach a pseudo uh, ductile joint. So with rigidity, but not exactly the final solution. So in this case, your design will be easily resolved for the dimension of the portal, but your design will be focused on this element that can be, can be realized with dowels, with resin, or yeah, these two, these two way. And so this is the focus of your design. For example, here it was realized with uh, epoxy resin, but also in this case, you must be attention because it's, it's not anymore a ductile joint. So, and also the realization with the epoxy resin is quite difficult. Or other ways you can realize stroke uh, dowels, but with um, a specialized uh, calculation. Or you can obtain the stiffness not only with the bracing, but also with a shear wall that the same as it works in the timber frame, you realize with this kind of wall. And this is also a solution that can be used a lot of time. And again, very important, the nailing here of the element. Floor wind bracing. So when you are to make this uh, solution on the floor, you can have this kind of configuration. It depends on not only aesthetic, but on the sides that you have of this pan or with the shear panel again. And here are some examples. These are taken from the earthquake that uh, we had in Italy in 2012. Um, this shows what's the role of the floor. So uh, this image was taken from us during a, um, a visit from clients. Okay, this is not timber, this is concrete, of course but you can see what's the problem of the behavior of a building in the, with horizontal forces. The fact that the floor, it tries to open the wall. So this is not exactly a box behavior because the floor here tries to move the wall in this direction. So what we have to provide when we build uh, and we design a timber houses is the stiffness of the floor. And for this reason, you have a lot of different possibilities. Again, truss systems uh, and shear elements. And uh, related to this shear to, to the floor, we will see after what we can, we can, we can tell. Anyway, here 
Again, it's how the forces are working. So vertical force in the column and horizontal forces taken by the trusses. We must be careful because all this one in our design, column and beam, are hinges. So of course, horizontal loads, we don't have any prevention from rotation. And so the approach is to use a solid wall, a solid wind bracing, a solid concrete part of the element that tries to keep this, or to make it throw trusses and so on. These are high um, <coughs> building. This is in uh, Sweden. And you can imagine that with one, two, three, four, four or five floors, the design of your wind bracing is quite important. So in this case, the choice was to use an inner core in concrete in order to keep these forces. And the most critical aspect of this design was to connect the floor again to this element. Yes, yeah, sixth floor in Sweden, and the choice was to have, usually it's the lift structure in concrete and can take all the forces in horizontal. No, you, you, well, with the panels, you have such great forces that with the panel, you can transfer in every joint, but then you have to transfer on the ground, which is quite difficult. Instead, with the concrete, you have more uh, consciousness that you can provide all the forces to that. And so with six floors, for sure, it solves to you a lot of problem and to design of the panels, which could be very strong, and also the connection must be really, really strong. So it's a way to be sure that in your design method is without mistake. Because if you give everything to the panels, you can, but in sixth floor, it's really a big amount of forces. So this is why it's a good solution in these examples to give to the inner core. Yes? Yeah. Uh, you want to see some connection? No. no, no. You're saying that yeah. Yeah, well, because uh, these examples are quite big examples, so in six floors. And in this case, exactly, you should realize some very big connection on the ground to take all the forces if you have realized the panels only. And in this case, so it's a good way just to give to the inner core. And we were speaking about, I showed you these images regarding the, um, the earthquake in Italy. And the concept is, is related to what we are seeing now. So the role of the floor. Um, the floor has this very important role to transfer the horizontal loads to the resistive elements. So it takes the horizontal and it gives to the panels. And the second is to create this box behavior. For this reason, the floor has its importance and above all else, how you connect to the panel and to the wall. And the same concept is taken from, from the roof. Yeah, this is our general way, because when we are speaking about seismic, we have to make uh, a general, we have to speak about general concept that Basically, the earthquake generates horizontal forces on the building that must be transferred to the ground. <coughs> the building can dissipate energy through permanent deformation of some components, and we have to choose which components. And this enhances to reduce forces acting and consequently save material connection. And of course, the designer can choose which part of seismic dissipated through permanent deformation of components and which part are not by the Q factor. And the Q factor is you know, the most important choice that you can make in the timber construction. And we'll see after with the, the choice that you can, you can make. And with technical detailing that you can, 
make sure that you are having ductile behavior, not brittle failure. And all these general concepts are important in order to understand what we're speaking later, so about the connections of the building. Because the connection in the steel is the only way that we have to uh, transfer this, uh, to create the ductility in the building, because the timber actually is a brittle material. This is examples, it's, uh, it's nice to see how the floor behave regarding its, the stiffness. Uh, so I try now to, to show you how it works. This is basically the stiffness, so the uh, displacement and the forces. And you can see that a standard, a general floor has this behavior, which is a standard floor is like uh, this one. So just like planking with one layer of planking, so not at all stiffness is given. But if you already uh, decide to make this bracing that we have seen before, that can be steel trusses or uh, we'll see after perforated plates, so you have this behavior, you see that you have a good now behavior of your floor regarding the stiffness. More, if you uh, decide to use um, a concrete floor, I mean, concrete floor is the timber plus concrete floor. It's a good way to uh, give a very high stiffness to your floor. And the behavior of this one, they have very rigidity. <coughs> what happens here? Here, of course, the fact is that you have now a floor that is a timber floor with timber beams plus the concrete floor, the concrete slab, five centimeter. Of course, you have to be sure that the connection between the timber and the concrete is perfect. But in this way, you can see that you can uh, uh, arrive to very high values of stiffness. Why well, I wanted to show this one? Just because we have these three uh, situation. At first, just with the standard planking with nails, just a um, three centimeter planking, it's really not a stiff floor, so you don't have at all the box behavior of the, your building. A good way is this one, and you arrive to this value, so it's an acceptable stiff floor with this um, horizontal wind bracing created by perforated plates or trusses. And in that case, we have a box behavior. But if you want to reach for, uh, because of very high horizontal forces, very high seismic forces and so on. The perfect solution is through the concrete. Concrete connected to the timber through connectors, screws and whatever, and you obtain this behavior. This is just an overview of what happens in the, uh, in the floor and what with university we work on. Okay, and then after, again, the general way to obtain the floor, so uh, standard beams, with planking, double planking, again, the light down glue lamp that I showed you before, sometimes could be a good solution. This is the typical way to connect everything. And of course, the cross melated timber floor. Um, the advantages of this one are the same that I told before. It's a floor with fast installation, high resistances, high dimensional stability, and possible, oh, it's nice to be to be seen. And this is our typical way to install it. So um, a panel to panel connection with this kind of solution and screws or other, other way to do it. So this is the more classical, just a screws. This is usually used for the wall. So with a board and then two screws. This is a little bit more complicated because it's realized in the middle, but, uh, and let's say the modern way, well, always more used nowadays, just with screws, place it with inclination. Okay, so I think the first part is over. It's uh, 20 minutes to 11. Uh, you have questions now, so we can make at the end. I know you have any questions? Yes. I'm sorry, uh, I see in the continent it's very common to actually use a concrete screed over a cross slam yeah. flooring system. Yeah. And yet it's, um, it's, 
It's kind of at odds with the uh, environmental issues that you gain with the timbers so that you then cover the concrete. Yeah. Le I understand that you get better vibration characteristics. But are there any other techniques that you would suggest other than using concrete? Because I'm kind of... Okay, yeah. With, yeah, let's say that in that case, I agree that that concrete is not for structural reason, so it's not in order to, uh, to have more forces on your floor. It's just for sound, exactly. Um, sound and probably inertia, inertia behavior of the sound coming in. And it's true, it's not the best way because you are giving weight where you don't need it. Uh, so the technology is, is going in the direction of solving the acoustic problem and we will see after some details. And in that case, uh, I think that it's useless. I mean, if you resolve with good details, you can avoid this concrete. This, the concrete is still a good uh, solution if we are not speaking about structural, so in structural is for sure a good solution if you have to create a very resistive stiffness floor, maybe because you have very high earthquake, but it's good for the inertia. And the inertia, the thermal inertia is still nowadays difficult to obtain in different ways because it's the critical aspect of the timber that you don't have so big massive like in the concrete. So for sure in the future, must be developed something to avoid totally this concrete. But this concrete, just for the inertia, could be still a good, a good solution. OK. Yes? Um, can you go back to the last slide before that one? Just, that, just a question on the connection between the panels that sort of come in and sort of possible yeah. differently when you come in late. Those kind of connections, are they, I think you might hint at it at the bottom there, are they basically just shear and Yeah. In your design, when you're checking it laterally, does it act like one big panel? So you know, you've got compression here and tension here, or does it act like lots of separate panels that are all next to each other? Mm. Yeah, it, it's true because um, it depends on your um, design approach. If you your hypothesis, hypothesis that it's a stand a total wall this connection is not able to give you exactly that resistance. And for this reason, um, this one can give you all the forces in all the direction because the screws is inclined in both directions, so like here. And this way, it's a total connection. Otherwise, you have like to prevent other uh, behavior of the wall with perforated plates. This is the only way that you have, m m plus just perforated place like this okay. to make the connection. So you, you can achieve a sort of compression tension and shear. Yeah. But you couldn't do it if, like a, if you wanted to do a slab, just a long slab, you could never get it from two ways spanning. So that you couldn't get a moment out of that. You could just get it. Uh, no, the moment, no, the, you had to like create a standing, a standing uh, connection there. Mm. Yeah, exactly. 